This is how I live. I live. This is what I love. Oh. This is all the things that my dreams have been made of. Welcome to my life. This is what I love. This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of. Music love life. Welcome to another episode of Music Love Life. I am Kevin Davis. Across from me is Be Honest. And today's guest, we have the owner of the Hot Shopper, Woo-hoo! Shanice McLaren. Welcome. <laughs> hey, thank you. Welcome. Thank, thank, you, thank you for thank joining you. us today. I'm glad to be here. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right. So I tell you, before we get started uh, talking about, you know, kind of what we have on deck, tell us a little bit about what you do with uh, the Hot Shopper. Okay. So I run a luxury personal shopping service. Um I cater to clients from all over the world. Um, Anybody who has a need of a particular designer item that they cannot find in their local store or, you know, anywhere on the Internet um, is basically my job to uh, locate that item for the client and, you know, process the sale and have the item shipped to them. So that's what I do. I love it. It's fun. It's one of those jobs that, you know, they're very unconventional, don't meet a lot of people who do it, and just being able to you know, turn a total hobby, sometimes an expensive hobby, into something that's um, financially productive is a blessing. It's it's great. It's amazing. I love it. Dope, dope. So have you been, I assume you've been really busy shopping for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I have, I have. This is a busy time of year for me. Um, Well, Christmas around this time, it kind of starts dying down, which is good because sometimes I get really overwhelmed. But People start shopping from October, November, nonstop, every day of the week um, I'm doing business. So I get to kind of chill out and, you know, enjoy my family for the next couple days. Then it's back at it. So basically you're saying dudes, when they get a certain amount of money, (laughs) no longer buy gifts for their women. Is that what you're saying? No, I do get a lot of clients that actually do buy gifts. I do. Mm -hmm. If they're, if it's... Some clients come to me like, hey, I don't have time. She told me that this is what she wants. Can you find it for me? Can you gift wrap it for me? Whatever. Right. I'll do that. And then some people are like, you know, some people um, shop for themselves or they shop for other people in their family, things that they know, you know, their loved ones might desire. I love it. So what kind of things would someone uh, want to buy? Like, well, I guess, especially for the holiday season, what are common items that okay. people are picking up? so... People, um, for me, during this time of year, people like to buy a lot of one-size-fits-all type of things. So handbags, accessories, earrings, um, necklaces, bracelets, things like that. Um, But there are some people, you know, who understand or they know, like, their loved one's sizes and things like that. So I'll get shoes. I'll get, you know, um, shirts and but mostly, you know, handbags definitely (laughs) do numbers this time of year. I love it. Yeah, handbags for sure. A lot of purses. Yes, a lot. Okay. A lot. I'm hearing you talking, and I want to respect everything that you're saying. However, I happen to notice the Florida Lee right there on your shoulder, tattooed. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, this is Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I'm a it Falcons is. fan. Okay. Super Bowl is in Atlanta. It is. You better not. Better not make it to the Super Bowl this year. Oh, well. Not to play in Atlanta. I feel judged because of my tattoo. Because you are. I am not a Saints fan. Um, oh, okay. I'm not a Falcons fan. I'm actually a <laughs> Patriots fan. I have no idea what's going on um, then. But uh. this Fleur de Lis, um, this is a flower of light. It's a French symbol. And I got this when I was in college studying fashion. Um, French, be- You know, France being the fashion capital of the world. It was just a small symbol that just kind of, you know, represented my love for um, fashion and the inspiration that, you know, France, Paris has had over fashion. So I'm you, glad I asked. Yes. See, I was, I was, I was going to be giving you the eye daggers the whole show, yes, but now that yes. I know it has nothing to do with the Saints, okay, we back. We back good. Yeah. We back good now. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I got to shut him down. Right. Okay? Oh, you better move quick. I don't know how many shows you done seen around here, but you got to act fast. <laughs> Catch you slipping. Right, right, right. Well, th- thank you so much for coming. Yeah, absolutely. How, before we even go further, though, how can people get in touch with you if they wanted to use your services? Okay, my Instagram is the Hot Shopper L P S. Um, that's H A U T E. Um, you can contact me there. You know, our visual catalog, basically, our Instagram page is there, and you can um, contact me via DM or um, a phone number that we have on there. You can just click the text button and you know, message us right. Straight from there. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm never buying a gift for anybody ever again. No, you don't 
I'm I think you're a terrible gift giver anyway. <laughs> I am gift card. Like, like you need her. You need someone wow. like her to. I'm a gift card guy because you know here's my biggest problem. I find it difficult to buy gifts that don't mean anything, but they're just like showy gifts. Mm-hmm. I'm a the guy who likes utility gifts. So like if I know. You're let's say you're in college. I'll just buy you a textbook. That's like that's you know I mean, that's how boring that is. <laughs> wow. But how practical you are. right? But I'm not like I wouldn't get you like a diamond He's bracelet. He's in school. Or of course, he needs a book. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And there's something wrong with that. I know there is. I just, <laughs> I just it's just the guy I am though. <laughs> so you pick. So just so you're the one that always you just grab random ass just no just a gift card because I can't if I can't get you something I know you need. Just a gift card. Did you ever do like the the random Secret Santa? Yeah, I mean, when Are you I'm a Secret to. Santa participator. Only when I'm forced to. I don't participate in any of this. I'm not participating in Christmas this year. My wife finally has. We have gotten to the same place when it comes to gift. She doesn't want a gift. Well, she doesn't. It's not that she doesn't want a gift. She said, "Let's not exchange gifts this year." And I'm, you know, I'm how did you pull that off? That's, that's not me. What do you mean? How? To, it's not like a trick. Yeah, you, you, you did something. You, there's 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 <laughs> leverage there. There's no trick. It's just since when? Since when do women say I, I don't want, want gifts? gifts? A woman is ready to build some stuff together, and we're we're putting our money in other places. Okay. That's okay. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, All right. So we're building. Yeah. Building. It's a building year. So you're you're building with your woman. Exactly. It was her idea. I didn't even coach it. It wasn't had, it had nothing to do with me. I know you want me to say I coached that along. <laughs> now, she came to me with the idea. I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm impressed. Because you don't hear about that a lot of times, especially no. when you hear about people's relationship in the holidays. They're either fighting about money or somebody's not getting or not what on, they want. Not and, on the same page. And, yes. Hey. That's good. I guess, you know, you have the right wife because I don't know if I would go for it. <laughs> Why not? Because you feel like this is the gesture? This- um, I mean, I'm a giver. And that's that's just how I, you know, show that's how I show my love for my people. That's how I show, you know, my affection. And I am very thoughtful about the gifts, you know, that I do give. Um but I mean it's kinda like your job too. So like you well, you you're good at it. That's why you're able to make money off of doing it for see, other people. For, for what I I mean, I only do the gift like it's only gifting around this time of year. Okay. I have people who shop with me all throughout the year. Gotcha. So a lot of them shop for themselves, you know. Um but this time of year particularly is more so for gift and gift gifts and gift giving. Um, however, for me, you know, birthdays, um, you know, Christmas, any special occasion, weddings. That's a lot. Of, I'm, I'm counting up all the time somebody has to buy something. That's just. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, it's. This is America, for man. For me, it's we just spend money. A lot. I can't take it with me, man. That's how I, and that's how I look at it. I just, you know, try to give people flowers while they're alive. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, um and and that's just how I operate now. Do you actually give flowers? I think flowers are a ridiculous gift. Um, I did give my best friend flowers for her birthday because she likes them. Were they fake or real? No, they were real. No, see, that's what I'm saying. Like they die in a couple of days. It's she like likes dead flowers. You oh, can ask her. I, it's so weird, but it's the <laughs> she will say it. She will tell you. I've had these flowers for three months. <laughs> oh I have had women. They like turn. Tell me, they turn the roses upside down or something like that, or hang them. To dry them out. Oh, dry. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That, and then put them in a the book thing. or something, or just leave them in the house. Don't flowers don't, start stinking? I don't know. I'm not. I don't think they stink after they die. I don't. I don't think I've ever smelled like a rotten smell or. Mm-mm. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I'm not the gift guy. Sorry. My wife already knows this though, so you know we've been married a while. She's good with it. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I like gifts. Gifts aren't so bad. That's my love language. <laughs> See that was so sweet. <laughs> it is. It I think is. I think my wife's word, love languages are words of um, what, words of affirmation. affirmation. I forgot nice. the word. She, words of affirmation. You can That's mess up. Language. You gotta I, say it. She's told me. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. How many of them are there? I'm um, five. What are the five? Quality time. Words of affirmation. Gifts. Uh. I think um, I'm I'm like acts of service acts or something. Acts of service is another Deeds. one. And I always forget the fifth one, whatever it might be. I don't know which one I am then. I can't remember. Um, quality time. Quality time, maybe. Maybe quality time. Okay. Or acts of service. I can't remember. I don't I don't know if I necessarily believe in, in love languages. <laughs> what do you believe in? <laughs> Please let me know. How do, you, how do you believe in it, though? Like, I mean... You think it's, it's you like... Put, you put stock in things. Is it a religious doctrine? What do you mean you it don't could believe be, in it? It could be. It could be. You know what I'm saying? I just... I, I don't really believe in it. I don't, and we say, what do I believe in? Are we talking about love? I mean, just in general. You know, you're doing this this whole Christmas thing, and then 
There's no love languages. <laughs> I, just, I mean, you know, I just if I can't touch it, feel it, look at it, you know what I'm saying? Give me give me something I can look at. Okay. And feel. Maybe so maybe gifts would be mine because yeah. I, I need to see I need to see it. Like, oh, you like me? Let me see what you Oh, you like me a lot. Yes. <laughs> I mean, my wife bought me a car for my birthday. Oh. She did. Yeah. Very nice. She did. So that's, see, that's he's he's no stranger to any of this here. Okay. He's just But I but the year before on a bit. The year before I bought her a car. Just because, mm -hmm. so you did. So you did. You know, I mean, I, it's not that I don't give gifts and I don't appreciate what a gift means. It's just that she needed a, another car, and so I bought her one. But she wasn't expecting it. Right, that's so nice. Yeah. So hey. Thoughtful. And like, you know, is, is that what every woman wants? They just want the man to just. Um, he bought me a car. It's not even that. It's not even that because you know I have a, I have a car. I mean. I just want my man to be thoughtful of, you know, the the things that I need or that may be bothering me. Like, you know, there's been this post going around. Um, I need you to be his, a little closer to the mic, though. Be his peace, you know, mm -hmm. and... You like P-E-A-C. -E yes, yes. P-E-A-C. Okay. Yes. Hey, it's different pieces. It's different pieces. Be his peace and, you Fair know... Um, Side piece. It's something, I mean, I do believe, like... <laughs> We should provide a balance for each other. If I'm having a bad day, I should be able to come home and find sanctuary in, you know, my man and oh, man, um, yeah. and vice versa, you know. So if that car may have been something that she was stressing about and, you know, you saw her need for it and you took care of it. And she may have seen something that you you have a need for and may have taken care of it. So I feel like, you know, that's what... That's one thing that relationships are totally about. You got to take care of each other. You got to anticipate every, you know, each other's needs. That I do agree with in in totality. I'm I'm big on reciprocity. Like I will pour into you a hundred percent, but yes. you gotta give it back, and because that's the only way that I can keep giving it back to you is you gotta give it to me. So that's that's how it works. It goes in the circle. Reciprocity. So you give to get. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay. That's quite interesting. That's the that's the secret Santa. Okay. That's Man. what secret Santa is. But I'm saying you require yeah, the gift. That's to a give. 69 as well. You got to give to receive. You don't have to. That's a 68. 68 is still doable. It happens a little more often probably than the 69. No, that's a loop. This is when you run off the track. It has to connect. <laughs> it has to connect. All right. That's hey. the way it works. That's what, that's what the, that's in, in, honestly, that's what giving is all about. So let me ask you this. Is being able to receive. Do you give first or do you, are you, do you, because of how you are, do you wait to get first and you say, okay, this might be an okay situation? No, I give first. Okay. So one time or two times. How many times do you give somebody to not give back? Mm, depends if I Yeah, I guess it depends on what it is and the Yeah, I didn't think about that before. Mm. I don't know. See how you dig a little bit, Shanice? Um <laughs> See how when you dig a know. little bit. Because like it's just falling apart. Because like if if I give if I give someone something and say you know here I may not be looking for you I may not be specifically looking for you to return that favor hell even when I met my fiance she was on, stuck on the side of the road I helped her out with her tire I wasn't doing that to get her mm. come on man it just worked out <laughs> come anyway nobody you have that. to you have to give with an open heart an open hand you can't. This ain't giving. But you can't, not both hands open. Well, they're both open, but one of them is like this, facing up, waiting on your return gift. The other one is the right way, But right? it's the universe, man. You got to put it out in order for it to come back to you. If you're giving negativity all the time, you receive negativity. So you got to, you know, you got to, that's that's my acts of service again. That's my prayer. That I was feel just, like you did your fiance a disservice. I did her a disservice? You did. How did I do her a disservice? Women don't need your help. Women, this is 2018. Women want to change their own tire. That's like you basically kidnapped her almost. Oh my God. That's part of that new movement. You know what I'm saying? You didn't give her the chance to change her own damn tire. And that's all she, that's all a woman wants is a chance. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're right. Well, I stole woman, the opportunity from I'm her. I'm totally offended. <laughs> You're offended yes. by not having the chance? I mean, you know, considering the status quo of, you know, relations between men and women um, in this day and age, like, I can understand the whole independent woman, you know, agenda. Um, but I 
definitely see areas in my life where I could definitely use a man. I mean, you know, there are some things that um, me as a woman, I can't provide for myself. Like I, I, I know one. You, you know, there are several ways. I won't talk about them here, but, you know, there, perfect I mean, I would. Perfect place to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect place you know, to talk about those things. But, um, but, you know, there are several aspects. Like, I hate washing my car. I hate taking out the trash. You know what I mean? Things no, because like these all sound like really bad chores. <laughs> this See, now, this is where. <laughs> a lot of women do want a servant. They don't really right. want a man. No. They want a servant. <laughs> I, want, I don't want to wash my car. Boy. You know, here's the I thing, mean, right? Name a woman you know that keeps a car clean. Like the outside is always filthy. Like it's just like dirt from years and years of how like how long are you gonna go without washing a car? I don't care if it's Jennifer Lopez or cars. She's got all type of shit in the trunk. And in the, yeah, in the inside, in the inside, it's at least four outfits. She could change completely four outfits strong, mm -hmm. heels and all. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, like, mm, this something that you take no interest in taking care of, you want a guy to come in and do that thing. I mean, does he not do it for himself? You know, I I feel like you, as a man, you take care of your woman. If it's something that you're doing for yourself, go, you wash your car, hey, you can hose mine down too. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, I don't want you here to use you, but I do believe in gender roles. I do believe, you know, there are different things that women um, are expected to do as a woman. There are different things that men are expected to do as a man. Um, or else we wouldn't place so much emphasis on, you know, needing one or not needing one or having one or not having one. I mean, yeah. you know, these positions and these um, these roles, you know, they add value to each of our genders. What's something that's a woman's role? Um, well, I definitely believe in catering, um, taking care of, you know, I'll feed you, you know, I will, I will, you know, make sure the home is clean, make sure you come home and you have a nice warm running bath. Like, I'm... Just being giving in itself, like, I really just want my man to have the best experience, you know, when he comes around. Um, on top of that, like, on an emotional level. Listen, you know, wait a minute. Hold on. Before we get more, okay. way further, are we talking about birthdays or are we talking about every days? I like, mean, every, no, no, no. Regular day. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, every day is not going to be easy. You know, I'm a working woman, too. Sometimes right. Sometimes I want to, you know, have either a day off or I want a day where I'm catered to, but... I mean, I just believe in take you taking care of me just as much as I take care of you, and that doesn't have a set date, time, place. Right. You know. What 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 would be a man's role then? A man's role. Um. Okay, I'm not a man, but I mean, what um, do you th what do you expect? What do I expect of 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 my man? Um, to handling, do all the shit that, that she doesn't want. No, <laughs> I mean just handling things that are heavy duty. Um, I I'm not good. I'm not handy at all. So. I mean, easy, things are easy. I can change light bulbs and things like that, but I can't change tires. I've never done it. I've never had to do it. I could watch somebody do it and say, okay, I think I can do it, but I've never had to do it. Um, like I said, taking out the trash, you know, mowing the lawn, just the, uh, I don't want to call it dirty work because then you guys are going to make me feel bad. But I'm not going to make you feel bad. Why would we make you feel bad? You all want to serve it. No, 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 no. <laughs> she, she honestly just corroborated my problem with this, the situation with you and your fiance. She doesn't know how to change a tire. So she's handicapped in this when it comes to, if there's a situation, let's say that her cell phone's not working so she can't call for service, her man is nowhere around, and she's there by herself. Now what? If your fiance was the same way, you came and saved the day, changed a tire, and now she's ass out when she's out in the middle of the stick somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We need to have tire changing sessions, like coaching sessions for all women so they can learn how to do this thing. And men can learn how to nurture and care for, right? Nah. But ain't that, that's, ain't that what the man is supposed to do? What? Show up, handle it, get you on your way. Mm. <laughs> what, is, what was that? Uh, what does that mean? I'm just saying that's felt, what the man's supposed that. to do. Oh, okay. You're supposed to, hey, step aside, baby. Yeah. I got this. Hold my beer. I mean, if you're if you're available and if you're able. You know, definitely come through in the clutch. Mm -hmm. But um, I I agree with both of your points. If you know, I don't want to ask the creepy guy over to my right to <laughs> to help me. If there's right. no, I don't feel the if I don't feel safe. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, so in a situation like that, I mean, I would like to know how to do it, but. I don't want you guys to come back and use that against me. Like, oh well, you knew how to do it. You know how to do it. So why are you calling me? Mm -mm. I don't Come think. And save the day. I don't think your man would do that. You know how to do it. Why are you calling me? I don't think unless you just pissed him off that morning. Uh, what about pumping gas? Do you pump your own gas? I, just, I sure do. Oh no! Um, if a man is in the car, 
I'm not pumping my gas. He's on his phone. <laughs> I've seen that so many times where like the the guy will be in the passenger seat and you know homegirl has to go around and pump her gas. I'm not having that. Yeah, I don't teach people how to treat you and you know. My daughters and my wife I definitely pump their gas and I take the trash out. I do the laundry. Oh. Um I don't mow grass. Are you progressive? What do you mean? Does that make you a progressive man? I mean, I, that's, you do the that's something she didn't say. She didn't say that. I, I'm <laughs> adding one to the kind that's of, a bonus. Oh, I do. I mean, I do the laundry. I do. That's a bonus. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I do. I. I. We don't watch. We get our cars detailed. <laughs> um, we pay somebody to do the lawn service. Okay. But I do take the trash down to the street. The you know a couple of feet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I mean, I would be the type that would you know in my singularity, I would pay for every pay for everything to get done. I pay to get my hand my car hand washed. And you know, detailed, and I, um, I mean, I pay, for, I pay for the lawn service, right? Um, things like that, things that I don't want to do, I pay for, but you know, I can save a little money. I would like to <laughs> save some money by having a guy around. It would be nice. Hmm, it was interesting. It would be nice. I just so because there are a lot of successful women yeah. who are going to be spending this holiday. Without someone special, mm-hmm. right? So I'm wondering in the the way that you phrased it a moment ago, it kind of just sent the light bulb off that the successful women whom are using that financial success in to replace a man. I've always kind of felt like if. For example, if a guy doesn't isn't as successful as you are, he doesn't make as much money, that has nothing to do with whether or not that man should be a man in relation like if if you make a hundred thousand and he makes fifty, what the fuck does that have to do with him taking out the trash? What the fuck does that have to do with him killing the bug? You know what I'm saying? Like he, you can still change your tires. So right. what? And you're saying that you're if- still the man in the relationship. Why would that be not a man. be that? Why would it not be that though? Mm. What is what's your experience? Well, well, because a lot, I think I think that a lot of women feel that if a man doesn't make more money in the relationship, then he has no value. Women don't want to go backward. They just not hitting rich the, women aren't aren't looking down. They just not hitting the back. The back of the vagina. Yeah. They're not uh, hitting the bag. That's all it is. Uh, You're saying that, that the guy too. who's they making can buy fifty thousand dollars is not, you know, taking taking down the the woman that makes hundred k. No, no, I'm saying that the ones that are having that issue where they don't feel like they're still the man in the relationship, they're just not hitting the bag. They're not reaching the bag. <laughs> wow. Well, that's you think that's why they women talking crazy to them? Yeah, because women talk crazy. But anyway, so there's only a couple of things that can quiet a woman, in my experience. Again, it's just all my experience. That's one of them. <laughs> that's one of them. <laughs> Okay. That's one of them. I mean, you could just be you could be like a Ike Turner, but other than that, you know what I'm saying? Like this. Mm. Yeah, that don't the Ike Turner don't get you as far as. No. I mean, okay, so me being you know successful woman, um, dating a man that makes half of what I make, I don't see in my near future. Um, as, as shallow as it may sound, I, I was just having this discussion yesterday with you know, a guy friend, and I actually saw a young lady post about it on Facebook as well, where she was basically saying that, you know, she doesn't see herself um, settling down with a, you know, a a general employee. You know, she wants to have somebody who is as entrepreneurial as she is, you know, who's trying to get to the bag just as much as she is. And my problem with dating is meeting men who are just complacent in whatever situation they're, you know, they're in. They're, They're cool working you know, a somewhat dead-end job or a job that doesn't really have much room for growth. Um, You know, they're cool with having to request time off and not be able to, you know, possibly not getting the time off that you need to go on vacation or whatever the case may be. And for me, I'm just like an entrepreneur hit the ground running. Like, I do my business now. You know, I want to take on other industries. And my mind is always thinking, how can I get more? How can I get more? How can I get more? It's going to be hard for me to relate to somebody who is unambitious, um, you do realize they're talking about ninety nine percent of the population, though, right? I, I understand that. Okay, because um, most people have a job that is, I guess, seemingly dead end. Um, they have to request time off. Mm-hmm. They go and clock punch a clock. 
They have m- multiple and I bosses. Get, I get that. I might be narrowing my pool a little bit. I'm not narrowing. You're in, you're eviscerating your pool. There, <laughs> there's no pool <laughs> left. This is a kiddie pool. No, but it's, it's you'd only be surprised. There are guys out there who are you know successful in in their own right and and things like that. I mean, I mean, there are a lot of people that are saying this these things, but the majority of the data shows that most people are n- making absolutely no money and they're worth absolutely nothing. Most people are worth, I think the, the medium black household is something like worth like $4 or something. When you take in the debt and like car notes and whatever, they, they're worth about $4. I think it did say like nine out of 10 people do not have <laughs> at least $1,000 in savings. Exactly. So I don't, I don't believe, I think that there's in Atlanta, especially because Atlanta is, is a different kind of place. Oh, yeah. And like we use Atlanta as a scope, for, a lens for the world. And I wanna, that's like the country. We use Atlanta as a, as a lens for the country, but black people in Atlanta, Walk a little differently than black people in other cities and other states. There's a there's a big group of black people with money here, but if you go to some other states, it's it's, it's non-existent. But even in Atlanta, though, a lot of people are just pretending that they are this guy that has these things, and it's really a lot more show than it is. You know, their credit cards yeah. are maxed out, yeah, yeah. and you know what I'm saying they're four or five times upside down in the car that they are driving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know that there's a pool there. Not that I don't want you to be with somebody. I'm just saying maybe people that have that idea that I can't deal with a guy that's not exactly these things, that just that, that seems almost too straight. You don't feel like that at all? Mm-hmm. Or you're I not mean, willing to settle? I'm, that's, and that's what it is for me. I mean, I have dated, you know, from the bottom up to the top. Like, I've dated guys in different arenas, different aspects, you know, different walks of lives, different incomes, things like that. And I'm like, if I'm going to get the same problems from, you know, the guy who makes, you know, 50000 a year and the guy who makes a million dollars a year, like, which would you rather have? I mean, I'd rather have no problems, but <laughs> right. I'd rather yeah. have more money. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, everybody is not perfect. I get that. You know, everybody is not going to walk the straight and narrow. Um but, you know, if you do meet somebody and you do, you know, end up falling in love and you you guys choose to build together, everything is not going to be peachy keen. Not in a, you know, not in a relationship, especially not in a marriage, you know. But, you know, I want somebody I can fight the good fight with, you know, that has the same mental space as I do as far as building an empire and, you know, making sure our future generations are straight. I don't want my family to be one of the families that have only $1,000 in, in savings. You know what I mean? Right. So that's pretty much what it's all about for me. Um, the generations to come and, you know, my family and our future. Okay, so what if that guy who's entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. go-getter, ambition on um, on max, mm-hmm. but he's not doing it the right way, as in legally? Oh, gosh. That don't count. It's not going to work for me. <laughs> okay, so that 1% I'm talking about? Now it's a 0.1%. 80%, 80%, <laughs> 80% of those dudes are not doing it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> Gone. No, but, you know, I'm a believer in God, so I feel like God has, you know, my perfect package. Um, he's working on it, and, you know, it'll present itself to me, you know, and everything will work out fine just how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, you know, I, I can't. I mean, you know, God's supposed to be delivering a whole lot of perfect packages. I mean, hey, I'm a believer. You know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't been in a serious relationship, so I can't say that I'm. I mean, I. Well, you know, no, I'm sorry. You say, I'm sorry. You say you've never been in a relationship. I've never been in a serious relationship. What's the longest relationship you've been in? Um, on and off two years. My daughter's father. Mm-hmm. So you've never. So have you ever loved anybody? I did. I loved. I loved him, but I'm. When I say serious relationship, I mean like. A positive road. You know, I absolutely love him. You know, I can present him to the world without worrying about him embarrassing me. I mean, I've been in serious <laughs> situations, you know, where it's just like, oh, I cannot stand you. Or, you know, I go through my text. But that's serious to me, you know, because right. I'm not responding like that if I don't care about you on a serious note. But as far as, you know, having mutuality, I haven't I haven't experienced that as yet. And I've I believe that I definitely will and I definitely can. It may not end, you know, if it does end, it may not end how I want it to end or it may not end on a positive note. But just to be able to say, like, you know, I met this person, we were great together and we built, you know, something great and I felt this way about him. Like, I I know I'll be able to say that sometime soon. I just can't say that yet. That's how women and men are different. I think that women, not, not all women, but I think that some women are willing to stop and just wait and do other things and while they're waiting on the guys are like, well, I need to find somebody for the ride. Somewhere somewhere along the way, I need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that guys have the ability to say, you know what, she might not be forever, 
But I'm not going to sit here and just chill by myself for this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I, women can be like that. Because we, we need, men need women just as bad as women need men. And I think we have a hard time of admitting that to each other. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I, I don't care. I don't, I don't care how wealthy the guy is. At some point, he wants something that he can't buy. I think, well, in terms of, you can buy, you can buy sex. Yep. You can buy a companionship, but you can't necessarily, do I don't, I don't, You can't do really I, buy true love. I mean, yeah. that's, not, that's not a feeling you can just, you know, give your money and expect to feel. You can buy somebody to stand there, draw you some attention, look good, but yeah. somebody that actually gives a fuck <sighs> about you and what's really going on with you. So somebody made a comment that women don't marry the man, they marry the lifestyle. Ah. So I, what I woman that. really is in true love if, <laughs> if you get down to it? Because as our guest is saying, she can love a dude, but if he's not entrepreneurial and a go-getter and willing to climb mountains... In business, in the business world, and doesn't settle for a clock. She ain't down for it. But, so hold on. So mm-hmm. I'm, so I'm saying that is it the lifestyle or is it the man? It, or is it? I guess it's both in some in some ways. For me, it would it would be both. But then that's not true love. I though. think it's I think it's the illusion. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we think that God is creating this perfect package of a person, right? This magical, wonderful person, and in a lot of cases. And especially when we see other people happy in their relationships, we go, okay, that that person, Michelle, found her Barack, right? That's the the <laughs> language in my is that is that accurate? Sure. Okay. Right? But she had to deal with Barack when he was buried. When he was offset. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like if even if God sends that person into your life. Right. He's still going to be full of shit in some fashion, like in one way or another. Right. Mm, 80-20 rule. I'm just saying. I don't feel like... Wonderful person, stands by you, supports you, does everything. Maybe he's... has bad feet odor or something. Oh, gosh. I mean, we all have our disqualifiers. We all have, you know, we all have the things that... We absolutely can't look past, and we do have the things that we, we can look over, you know. Um, there are some situations I've been in where, you know, a guy may have said the wrong thing or looked at me or just did something just wrong, you know. Um, but I'm a forgiving person. I may give him another chance, you know. But when, when that chance comes along, like, you have to rectify. You have to apologize. You have to understand what it is that you did, you know, to offend me and not and make sure you not you don't do it again, you know. Um so there are things I can forgive or things that I can look over, but I just, you, m- considering my experiences, I don't see myself clicking with, you know, a man that is not on the same page as me or, you know, going through the same, you know, lifestyle as me. I'm not asking for a lifestyle that I don't already have. Right. I want something, you know, that when we do come together, it it grows exponentially. Right. And I don't feel like that's, you know, too much to ask for. Um, whether I'll find it, I mean, for some it may be unrealistic, but I'm, you know, I'm confident. I, you know, I'm positive. I, I do believe that not necessarily accomplishment, mm-hmm. but ambition is important to match. Sure. And even if you're working at a, you know, a nine to five and punching a clock, what what are your what are your goals? Like, what do you aspire to do? If you just aspire to be this, then I could certainly see how somebody who is aspiring to be great and somebody who's aspiring to be middle mid, middle management. Mm-hmm. There might be an issue there, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, and this is the this is this is how I also see it. In order for someone to be able to take risks, there has to be someone who's willing to, to punch the clock. So, like, say, let's say you found that man who was willing to go and 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 break his back at that nine to five every day to make sure that no matter what risk you took in your entrepreneurial go get it spirit. Mm-hmm. There's still foundation for when you make a mistake because yeah. all business owners uh, yeah, realize sure, that sure. you don't always win. Right. And sometimes you, every day you have to kill what you eat. Yeah. You don't eat if you don't kill. But not if you got a man at home who's willing to go punch that clock. So while you're out killing food, he's making sure that there's no reason for you ever to starve if you make a mistake or a misstep. So there's that, there's that idea also. Mm-hmm. I think that sometimes there has to be balance. 
So if I'm looking for a woman that's also entrepreneurial and I'm entrepreneurial, we're both out here taking taking chances and and, and making, you know, bringing all this risk to our life, both of us to make a misstep, which could actually happen because a lot of businesses fail. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, now we're both having a punch o'clock and we're both doing poorly. You know what I'm saying? But if we, if one of us was willing to take that that road, the the road of less resistance to provide that foundation, that means the other person can make even greater take even greater chances and, and put more, bring more risk into the situation for a higher payout, potentially a higher payout, yeah, yeah. but they always can fall back on the other person. I don't know if you ever thought about it like that, but that's, that's the way I look at it as well. But you know what? The, <clears throat> the super couple thing is, is newer to me. Yeah. Like, like the Barack and Michelle and the Jay-Z and Beyonce, the super couple where two people are both, you know, exponentially like successful so on and so forth that's a new thing i think what has what has made has has brought us this far is one person in the relationship has pretty much the dominant career yeah. right and then the other person has been the support person yeah but the empowered woman does not want to be a support person anymore um, she wants the also the guy that is uber successful and so on and so forth. So everybody's trying to be a super couple instead of necessarily finding someone that supports the the hell out of you. Like you might be a bad person in in what you do, mm-hmm. right? Like Michelle was no chump. Right? right? She was she was cold on her own, but Barack was doing some things that she wasn't doing. So especially in terms of the, and I think she talked about that in her book in terms of them uh uh, having kids and raising a family, she had to take a lot of that load while he was campaigning and and out of town and out late in meetings and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. there's still like your your day to day life. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah Perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. I, I kind of that kind of supports what I was saying. I yeah, think. Yeah. For sure. Then <laughs> that's what I'm scared of. I think that that the the super couple idea is so romantic. It's it's very romantic. They actually. The, in actuality, though, you know I'm not a believer because all the things I don't believe in Christmas, etc. I'm not a believer in that. That's to me. There's so you're not few... a believer in super couples. No, they're this. They're they're so they're gonna be so. There only can be a couple. There oh there can't be a very handful, many. A handful yeah, there there can't be that many of those. It's but just that's not... the way that's the way it's supposed to be, man. It's supposed to be the 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 quarterback and the head cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> that's the super couple. All right. I don't believe that I'm the quarterback. I don't believe my wife is the cheerleader, but we do well. So you're the cheerleader. You. She's the quarterback. Yeah, sure. I guess. How, I, don't, I don't know if that's... Her pass is not that good. What? She, her pass ain't that good. She got to do more more combines or something. I don't know. No, but I don't. I believe that both of us are, are not the quarterback. Neither of us are the quarterback or the cheerleader. We just, we do well, though, without without that other stuff. You know what I'm saying, and mm-hmm. and I think that a lot of a lot of times people don't give credit to that. Everybody wants to be super couple, super whatever, successful. Yeah, everybody wants to be their super selves, and 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 I don't think that there's necessarily a. It's different. It's not worse. It's different. It's just different. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is that you can limit yourself because you're looking for something super when in actuality there's another place for you that's maybe a little bit lower than super couple. And you'll be just fine though. That's a little bit lower than super couple. It's a little bit lower than super couple. You might be shooting too high. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about just in in, in general. Mm -hmm. Some a person can be shooting a little too high. And maybe there's another place that's a little bit south of super couple. So what is it? Because it's it's it. I think I think the realistic thing, though, to be honest, is like someone that like as a guy, maybe an athlete, right? Pro athlete makes a good salary there, uh-huh. and then like a second grade school teacher or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? It probably right. makes you know maybe thirty. Mm, okay, at first, I mean, teachers make teachers can make eighty thousand dollars after you know fifteen twenty years of of teaching. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and is eighty thousand dollars bad? I don't think it's bad. I think that, that you can you can have a good life off of eighty thousand dollars a year, and especially if somebody else is in the house too, and you are over a hundred thousand dollars. I think a hundred thousand dollar household is a household that can be okay. Yeah, I'm, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to 
like take off whenever you want to. You're not gonna be able to do those like you know trips to mm-hmm. Fiji or because she know. want a boss, man. She don't want nobody that gotta go see how much sick time they got. But the, but that's just but what I'm saying is is that I I I want it for I want it for you, but I don't know that that is real. I'm not a believer in that. <laughs> what I'm a believer in is the majority of households ain't got shit. They're hurting. And I, and and it's true, but you know, my aim is to um meet someone who, you know, while we're working and we're paving our way for our future generations, you know, we can impact change and even in our local communities or anything like that. Like I want to show people that it can be done. And I mean, I, I want my community to have that aspiration that when you you and the right person come together, nothing is impossible. You guys can really do amazing things. And it, it's not saying that, okay, for somebody, it may be making $100,000 a year as a combined household. For somebody, it may be, you know, making $500,000 as a combined household or a million or a billion, you know, but... I'm not, not a billion. Not, I mean, not gonna happen. Hey, it's it's not. It's no, not, that's not gonna. That's not, that's know. not going to happen, Shanice. That it's is, happened for people. Who? Name them. Name the people that you what? know. That Kylie Jenner. <laughs> okay, one. Name another. I mean, she became a billionaire. She won't, she won't be. <laughs> and then when when she's out of there, you know, there will be room for another one. Name you know what somebody I mean? that was poor or poorish and became a billionaire. Kylie Jenner. Name another. Poorish. Yeah, she wasn't poor. No, no, poor-ish. she wasn't poor. She wasn't a she wasn't a millionaire, and now she's a billionaire. Is what I'm saying. She wasn't a millionaire, and now she's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Name another person like that. You can't do it. They were already rich. Their parents were already rich. Their parents' parents were already a billionaire. And I get that, but you know, we have to. We definitely have to teach and educate, and and because let me tell you, I went to a class not too long ago um, about real estate investing. This new industry I'm trying to get into, and. You know, they talked about the racial wealth gap and things like that. But um, and in in the seminar, you know, they showed us a Netflix video about about it, and it told us that you know, in white households, you know, their um, their debt to income ratio is completely different. You know, when they come out of college, you know, you have a whole family backing you with money, and then you know, money buy, puts a down payment on the house yeah, for you, for right. you, everything like that. And then you know, of course, for black individuals, like. You know, we come out of college just to work and take care of ourselves and take care of our families that, you know, the the immediate households we came out of. So our wealth decreases. But things like that, you know, when I saw that, I was immediately inspired because I live, I'm in a similar situation and I want to make sure my family is taken care of. But at the same time, there are things that we are not taught, whether it be in school, whether it be, you know, not taught by our families and things like that, about investing, about credit, about, you know, taxes and, and things like that. And for me, having somebody on my team, you know, who can help me affect change in my family, in, you know, my lifestyle, in my community, that's that's another thing that I aspire for. So even though I may not, you know, be with the millionaire or the 500,000 heir, you know, I want to know that my household is taken care of. And for me, taking care of myself right now, like the only thing that I know or the only thing that I love and and the only thing I know that has changed my life completely is entrepreneurship. You know what I mean? Owning a business, um, investing money that can, you know, turn over and make you tons more money. So that's, I want to have somebody on my team who understands that, who can contribute to that, you know, who can, um, you know, add to and, and you know, completely change the way um, our livelihoods have been, our families have been, you know. And, no, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Speaking of yeah. white people... Speaking of white people, would you date outside your race? Um, so before this year, I really did not want to date outside my race. It it would be my heart's desire to end up with a beautiful, handsome black man, you know. But um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like my mind is changing and you know, my desire for love is you know, overwhelming me, and I'm becoming open to it. Uh oh, that number, that one percent got bigger. That pool is a little wider now. Well, I had to, you know, you come down on one level, you have to go up on another level. So that was my thing. Like, if I, if I, you know, change it from this to this, then I might have to, you know, kind of shift that a little bit. I haven't done it as yet. Um, Haven't gone on a date with anybody outside my race, but I think I'm slowly becoming more open to it. Mm -hmm. And see that, and that's amazing because I was assuming that you were saying strictly. Black love, we got to make it, we going to do this. Like So now, it's okay, so you're compromising. Yeah. That's uh, something to me that is absolutely necessary because most black women right now are not willing to compromise. Yeah, that's true. They have the set rules and they're not budging. And, mm, ah. 
It it does depend on who the who 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 the, who the rule bearer is, mm-hmm. right? Because there's it's it's a sliding scale. Yeah. As much as they say they're gonna stick to this, sometimes you know you can find your way around it. I'm just saying, Kevin is not willing to outside his race, so. That's, that's for him. He's he looked at you probably differently now. I'm sorry that I I made him see you that way, but um, it's, I mean, for <laughs> look a how long he's looking time, at me now. <laughs> for a long time, I've never wanted to. It's, right. it's I've always, always, always wanted to be with a black man. I've always wanted to marry, you know, black chocolate. That's my thing. You know what I mean? Did um, you used to look at me when you said that because of how chocolate I am? No, <laughs> no, no. I mean that that's just my type. That's what okay. I'm into. And, yeah, you know. I mean, I know, like, <laughs> people on the other side, white people, they may kind of fear, the, you know, us more the darker we are or whatever the case may be, but... No, side, not white women. No? Oh, no, no. not white they, women. They like it all, but... I, <laughs> they you like know, it they, all. They like it all. <laughs> I have a I soft spot. If you know? you're going to date a white person, like, you have to find someone that's willing to, like, disregard their entire family. Wow. Oh, I see what you're saying, because they got to bring you home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know how white white people they get into that. You know what? Fuck you, mom. And they're just fuck grandma. Right. But then you don't want that. Cuz you know white the whole person. family be racist and shit, so there'd be but a big thing. That's not true, Kevin. They're, all white people are not, not racist. All, but look yeah. though, no, all fa- all white families are not racist. Thank you. Okay. But that's not that but that's not the white person you want though. If they have to do that, then they're what she's talking about is is more of a generational wealth anyway. If he if that person is cut off from his family, What's the point? Like that dude is done. Unless he's a unless he's a high high dollar earner, he's done. Cause that's where the wealth comes from. It comes from the past generation. Mm-hmm. That's how you're able to get a leg up and a step up. Mm-hmm. And that's how white families are able to start hit the ground running. I'm using your phrase. That's why they're able to hit the ground running because somebody put a down payment on their first house mm-hmm. and somebody maybe bought them a car yeah. immediately out of school, paid for their school. They didn't even pay a dollar right. for their school. They don't owe any student they don't loan. Owe anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how they're able to do it. So if you get a white person that has to cut off his entire lineage, don't get that white person. Don't get that white person. <laughs> I'm telling you, that ain't the one you want. And vice versa. If a dude is, has to cut off whatever he but doesn't comes that from, sound more romantic though? He's willing to just no. That's bullshit. Just regard, <laughs> I mean, but that was people's lives. That was that was that was people's lives. Where interracial relationships, right. one person was white, one person was black. Of course, it was taboo. Da da da. They had to sneak around. They had hell. Trevor Noah's his whole story is shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, but but I'm just saying, if you're trying to get it, that's not the way to get it. Your credit does not get better if he's cut off from his family or she's cut off from her family. Well, I'm not necessarily dating because of his generational wealth or dating him because of, you know, what he has in the back. I'm not dating him because of that. But, I mean, that's not my end. That's not my, I'm not targeting you because right, I right, know right. you come from a rich family. This makes it easier. Um, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, ideally, like, even Especially outside of my now. race, even outside of my race, like, my number, like, my number one, um, let's say, race that I would like to date is not white. Your number one race like, is black, or you I mean, mean besides outside black? Of my race, I'd probably do like Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern, mm-hmm. like uh, Syrian, or so that's the like, that's the scale. You know, so black like, is number one, and then the rank is Arab. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, is there as a far reason? as attraction, um, I find them attractive. Okay. You know, I feel like they're dark like, hair. They say gutter, nigga. Yeah. Is what? Do they, they say nigga. Yeah, they say, they say nigga. nigga. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Maybe Khaled cool as hell. Well, Yeah man You know the that. Arab Right DJ right. Khaled But um They own all the clothing stores In the hood You know Ali cool as fuck Right oh, Gosh Um but You know <laughs> They I mean they They have some pretty good Lineages as well You know There are a lot of families Into oil And things like that I mean But White is probably At the bottom of my list I you know I don't ideally Want to go for Right Um somebody who Asian? Um, under white. <laughs> under? They're worse than white? So yeah, I thought, Okay, so first, white was the I bottom. I thought you might say Hispanic. Um, under Asian. <laughs> wow. You know what? There's, actually... Um, so maybe I just... And not I, I would probably if just I say it in black my head, and Arab. It's clearly the paper bag test. <laughs> right. It's clearly <laughs> just went from dark to light. <laughs> right. In sequential order. Man. That's cool though. I mean, it's, it's whatever you want. All I'm saying is, and it's not even for you. It's for people listening or watching. Is that you know, 
Everybody who who's okay, I know that you have entrepreneurial spirit, but mm-hmm. some people say they do and they don't. Yeah. And they're not really entrepreneurial at all. Really, they just like the idea of being that. So they'll say it and they'll get a business license maybe right. and they'll put it up on their page or whatever. But when it when it comes down Hashtag to it. Hashtag boss moves. Yeah, when it yeah. comes down to it, they're really not that. Not that. And they're also at the same time looking for someone who is all those things. Mm. And not selling also. And it's like, well, you got to still bring something to the table on your side. So I'm just, I'm really saying that because I want to challenge not just you, but everybody who's listening and watching. Because I think that a lot of times we shoot ourselves in the foot because we have this idea in our head, but it's not really something we're willing to do the work to to get. Mm. But you know what? That's especially when you start dating outside of your race or outside of your culture, there's more to it than, especially in terms of a serious relationship where you have a child and, you know, maybe that person has a child and y'all start talking about, okay, um, we're having a child together. Is our child going to be baptized or like the way I was raised or will they go through some type of process in your religion or what your family believes, right? right? Um, Will they celebrate Christmas? Will they not? Right? Were you upset because because we take them to do stuff on Saturday when you feel Saturday is the Sabbath? Right. And they should be doing nothing and da 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 da. And you start having some of those conversations, it gets, and especially old school family members, they, grandma be on some shit. Yeah. Right. So what about that then? So the Arab guy's gonna more likely be Muslim. Yeah. You you good with that? Um, I'm not converting. Which may pose the problem, <laughs> right? Um, Would you wear the the I wear hijab? hijab? Um, I'm not opposed to it. I mean, they, I wouldn't wear it as a lifestyle thing or as a regular thing daily. Nope, I'm not doing that. I'm very expressive in my fashion. I work in fashion. You right, know what I mean? right. Um, special occasions, perhaps, but ultimately, no, I'm not converting. I know that you know it's uh, one in a million probably chance that. There's a Christian one out there, but there are some out there. There are some. There are some. You know, I'm. I'm so is it white Jesus or black Jesus, though? Oh, Jesus is black. But what if they're like, ah? What if they're saying Jesus what, is white? Like, oh, like Jesus did, look like you. Do you guys I fight? I did date someone. I dated someone who believed in white Jesus, and she was like, <laughs> and was willing to fight for it. Yeah, she yo, was that's like, crazy. She was like, no, I'm not. I'm sorry, this can't go forward. Whoa! I was like, what? It was a black person. Yes. I'm like, fine wow. by me. God yes. bless. Wow. Which God though? She don't want your God to bless her. <laughs> She's like, no, thank you. God to me is God. I mean, Jesus is is um, the human, you know, a piece of the human form of God. I mean, but when I think of God, I don't think of God being black or white. I just think of God as God. But know? Jesus is definitely black. Yeah, Jesus okay. is definitely black. Or he would have been considered black considering paper bag test, like you said. Or, yeah, but I mean, you know, uh, um, you live on a plantation and you, you know, get pregnant by the master's son or, I mean, get pregnant by the master, have his son, their son is black. I mean, you got an ounce of color and you black. Yeah, but you know? that Arab guy that you're going to date who was where Jesus was from, he's not black because you said outside your race. So then Jesus is not necessarily black. He's like, mm. La, 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 la. I think you're being literal, like way <laughs> literal. But you Wait, know, what was that? Hold on, hold on. he's basically saying like because I'm calling them Arabs, you know, they're not gonna. That's not if I think Jesus is black and considering he's you know from that area. Then he, I've never said, seen any any Arabs with dreadlocks though. Why do you think Jesus had dreadlocks? Because that's what the Bible said. It, and who said the Bible was right? And hair like wool. Come on. You know? Wool doesn't mean dreadlocks, does it? I, mean, I don't see any Arabs with hair like wool. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, but it's possible. No, I, they. I mean, Or I wouldn't say woolly, but thick <laughs> woolly. and curly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you said that outside of your race. You said Jesus is from where you're from. Uh, I'm just saying, maybe he's not a black Jesus. Maybe he's an Arab Jesus. When we get some Arab Jesus po- I mean, pictures. honestly, when I think of Arab people, I mean, I, I would think of a lot of them as black. And then no Arabs. I don't know any Arabs that are Jews. Mm. Oh, yeah, there are. Many. Where? We're, okay, so we're, we're, we're the Jew Arabs. Well, we're talking about the Middle East, though, not necessarily mm-hmm. Arabs, right? In the Middle East, there are definitely Jews in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. The whole I think we just started saying Arab, but she said Middle East. All, all, all yeah. of the woke, all From of the area. woke. There's a, there's a segment of of the internet that is like. <laughs> no, 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 no. She said Middle Eastern first. We changed it to Arab. As a matter of fact, Arab. you changed it to Arab. Mm-hmm, you did. She said, Middle, said Middle East. She said Middle yeah. Eastern. I promise you. When she said day outside of race, she said I mean, Middle. 
Shanice, you said Middle Eastern, I right? Did. I mean, I know what region we're talking about, mm-hmm. but like, there's no Middle West. No one calls the Middle no, West. No, Middle East can be a part of Turkey. You know what I'm saying? It can be Israel. It can be the top part of Egypt. It can- You're right. It can be Israel. <laughs> You're right. It sure can. <laughs> I You're that. such a hotel sometimes. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I, I turned it on and off. Right. But yeah. anyway, there, there's a there are a lot of cultures in the Middle Eastern yeah. population. So mm-hmm. <laughs> there's some woolly hairs that are non Arabs that are middle, also Middle Eastern. Okay. <laughs> I I, I hear a comment going under the video right now. <laughs> oh God. That's okay. Comment away. Here come the links. <laughs> you better be sure to watch them YouTube videos. I'm not too. watching any of those Finish videos. Finish that shit to the end, man. I'm like anybody can make a YouTube video, just like anybody can make a podcast. Yeah, I don't have time for that. But most people right. podcasts are boring, though, dude. Like, have you listened to some of these shits for real? Uh, yeah, I've listened to a couple. Yeah, a lot of them. yeah. <laughs> hey, I ain't calling nobody's name out. I'm just. Oh gosh, you have somebody in mind? Mm, no, never, <laughs> never. Eighty. Yeah, is that what else we got, man? We're we're close to an hour right now. So are we really? We are. We're very close to an hour. Do we want to talk about Trump? You got what shutting you got? down the government? Uh, shutting down the government. Okay, I mean, okay, let's talk about that. Well, how? What are your feelings about that? Are you upset? Because mm. I asked you earlier, do you know anybody in the, that works for the government? Yeah, I know people that work in the government. And what have you done for them since you know they're not getting paid? Mm. I've sent them thoughts and prayers. Nobody gives a shit. If somebody else is not getting paid, uh, it, people do give a shit. That's not right. We didn't we try to avoid this. Why are we not? Why are we? Why are we shut down? We're shut down because Trump didn't get the money that he wanted for, for his the wall. wall. Right. Okay, Which, and they already told him he wasn't getting it, and he's been fighting. This was his campaign promise. Yeah. This was his marquee campaign promise, and he was voted in on that promise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now we, uh, the American people, are reneging. I don't have a problem with the government being shut down because nobody came to my. I was in I was in boot camp the last time I remember the, the government being shot shut down, and I didn't get paid for any of that time. I was there for eleven extra days while they were figuring it out. Wow. Hey, it is what it is. Let's 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 get it. No I, Christmas for your kids. People are literally uh, donating to this GoFundMe. Yeah. There, there's like last time I Real checked, there was like sixteen million dollars in it. Oh, you talking about the one that yeah. for the wall? Yeah. For the, we the people will fund the wall. So then we're so okay, so everybody who's outraged and talking all this this stuff, what about right these now. people? There's there's real money up. That's real money. Sixteen million is real it's money. That's real, real money. That's real money. If it wasn't a real thing that Americans really wanted, it there wouldn't be sixteen million dollars sitting in that in that account. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sixteen million dollars ain't shit though. Are you kidding? Sixteen million dollars ain't shit. How much is the wall supposed to cost? He wanted like five billion dollars. <laughs> Oh boy! They came up with sixteen million. Sixteen million? No, 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 no. No, what pisses me off is they didn't. Is that nobody had money for Flint to get clean water? Nobody had money for education. Nobody had money for people for what education for uh, people working in in stores to get fifteen dollars an hour. What right? They can't afford health care. They can't afford health care for people. What? But they got fifteen. In a week, they put, came up with $15 million for a wall. I'm about to check the link right now. Well, what's important? 16.2. 16.2 million dollars right. so far. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. From that, you said it wasn't. That's that you said it's nothing. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, for but people it's not just to for, pull out of their pocket. But not, but not for a wall across Mexico. No, no, no. It's not enough money, but it's a lot of money for people to have people are are making their they're they're um they're casting their vote again, if you ask me. They're casting for, their vote for with their Trump. dollar? For Trump again, once again, they're showing you. Hey, I know y'all saying y'all don't want him, but we want him. 16- I don't know that it's for Trump or just against Mexicans. Mm. I think it's against Mexicans. We splitting hairs. Mexicans, Jews, blacks, chinks. <laughs> they would just they want them all out. of them on the other side of the wall. Uh, Flint. This Flint. this is these are sixteen point two million votes for white purity. They no, want a white nation state. I don't agree with that. I think that there's there are people who really feel that the wall is necessary. I happen to believe that there is need for some type of sovereignty. I think there needs to be some clear cut definition of what being an American citizen is, because we're the only country where it doesn't really matter. No, we can't go anywhere else 
and put down our flag and pretend like it's okay. Nobody else will allow that. However, we've become this thing where we're so soft in our in our definitions. And that's not mm, just about that's not well, just about race or nationality. That's about everything. We are letting people say they're not one sex or one gender anymore. We've become so soft on labels and definitions that we're just blending into almost like a, a nothing state. We're a nothing state. I mean, because America doesn't have a culture. All these other countries that you're speaking of, they have a, they have a, they have a, a, a dialect. They have a culture. They have an America identity. Has a culture. It's America, just new. It's just newer no, than the other. No, no. Like if you eat Italian food, you know it's Italian. If you wear Italian shoes, you know it's like Italian leather. No, no, no. I've been That's to put Italy. Out there, I've been to yo. Italy. That's like, not. It's not American like that culture there. is like cheeseburgers, pizza, and fucking Ninja Turtles in Hollywood. If we're just talking. Okay, but that's a big thing. You, I don't think you realize. When you go to other countries All that shit matters Go to any other country with a, with a Zippo lighter And some blue jeans And see how much money You can get Or how much you can barter For a fucking Zippo lighter You'll be really Really surprised The culture in America Is what shapes the globe Everybody's checking For what we're checking for Our culture is very strong However We are allowing that culture To almost be non-significant Because we are not willing To say You're not me this is me. You're not me. And I know a lot of black people get offended because they say, oh, it's just white people. But it's not just white people. Americans have an identity. We have a culture. We just refuse to define it because we want to include everyone. So what is, what is, what, what is American culture? That's what I want to know. I just told you, you. You called it out. You're talking about Ninja Turtles. And it's Hollywood. It's the, the idea of entertainment being something that, that changes lives. It's a, it's a, I don't know that that's culture. That's marketing. Well, what's culture then? Cult- Italian food is culture? C- mm. cu- yeah, uh, yes. And an identity. And so identity, barbecue, it, it 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 is it is a bloodline. What's more delicious, is, Italian food or barbecue? Italians look a certain way. Their their physical structure is uh-huh. a certain way, right? Okay, their so religious minute, beliefs you're, you're, are a certain way. If that's their how you food want it to be, is a certain way. Okay, this not though. That's what I'm telling. You. I've been to Italy, and their food they ha- there is Italian people eat Italian food, but mm-hmm. the Italian food that you're used to, you're seeing is Italian. It's just some marketing play of what Italian food oh, is. You go there, and it's not like that. Different. So you mean tell me if I go to Italy? Italy is not like Maggiano's. It's not. It's not like going to Maggiano's. No. But the food is delicious. It is delicious, but that's American food. That's not Italian food. It's Italian ideas. It's American food. And see, you know what? That makes so much sense because no one like anyone that's Hispanic will not go near a fucking Taco Bell. Of course they that would. is not Mexican food, yo. Like, of course like they would. Like they get pissed off. They'll so, fight you over that shit. With that on the table, would you say that America really has a culture if we're taking these concepts from everybody else's culture and making them our own? Like, America is a place f- built on the backs of a variety of people. America is a place where several cultures, several, you know, country people from several countries have come here to make this country what it is. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, shove the idea of American culture down anybody's throat because— the truth of the matter is, it is a country built, you know, collectively by other people. But um, but you know what? You actually said something really key. American culture is taking somebody Something else's else. shit mm-hmm. and then putting my own little spin no. and selling the shit no. out of it. Everybody's, yes, it is. Everybody's yes. culture. Yes, it is. Everybody's That's what culture. black people complain about all day long. Everyone's culture is about conquering someone else's culture. That's since the beginning of time. The Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. This is how it's been forever. All, Europe, all, all the African European. warring tribes. All of those did the same thing. It's about conquering land and changing, assimilating everyone there to what it is that you do. That's the way of life. Since humans have been on this earth That's what they do It's not just white people In America It's everyone It's literally Everyone We make it seem like It's just That's just Americans White people ain't shit They always stealing ideas That's just not A realistic idea That's mm. really reckless Actually because Everyone has always Conquered other mm. places Name me one country That has never Conquered another Group of people Wakanda <laughs> That's not a real place Kevin The Sentinelese how about that? The Sentinel, yeah, you okay. The Sentinelese, they don't, uh, hey, we don't give a fuck what you right, do you over there. Right, that shit. And but you, you step here, over here, you, we gonna, you come 537. We're going to spare the fuck out of you, right. There. I get it, but realistically, though, that's one place. And there probably are some, you know, maybe in Papua New Guinea or something. They, they're like, you know, no, no, no. Some why. You know, they don't want that. But the majority of humankind is about being more powerful than someone that's and saying, else. that's my shit now. And if your people don't assimilate, then, you know, Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan, however you want to say it. That's all they did. 
I think there was there was some stat that was like one in five Asian people are related to no one in five people in the world are related to Genghis Khan or something. It's some crazy. What? It's like one in fifteen. Did he just like kill everybody. He did. He conquered everything. And and the way the way he did it was he would go into a place and he would find all the smart people, pull them to the side, and then everybody else, if you were taller than his wagon wheel, he'd cut your head off. That's how they did it. Now, the rest of y'all who are alive, if y'all are cool with this new thing, cool, do it. All the smart people, come on with us. And he, he, he assimilate those smart people into they be his doctors, his lawyers, or whatever at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? His and, nation builders. And he killed okay. all the people that were taller than a wagon, all the men taller than a wagon wheel. Damn. All throughout Asia and coming into Western Europe. Coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so... I, I, I hear you, and that's real romantic to just piss white people off and, you know, keep them in a place of disadvantage. But that's like the only place you can put them in disadvantage when you make them feel like that. But honestly, this shit has been happening forever. It's not new. It's not just Americans. It's not just white people. Everyone has done this. So when I'm saying American culture, I believe that American culture is still being built. It's a brand new, it's a brand new culture. Italian culture is ancient. Mm-hmm. Greek culture is ancient. African culture is ancient. Mm-hmm. All the African countries, they're ancient cultures. America is 40 years old. <laughs> but it's only 400 years old though. We're still yeah. making a, making we're still making what American is. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted that there are going to be people who come here from other countries and help build that, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying what's is there a limit to it? And that's why I'm saying a wall or at least sovereignty is necessary because how then do you define who you are as a person so that you can build upon it? I don't know that that wall helps us define what America is. It does. It helps us define it it symbolically. And that's where it has to start. Because you're willing to say, no, we're not letting anybody just walk in here. The only reason there's no wall on Canada's side is because they don't want to come here. There'd be a wall there too if it mattered. It just doesn't matter. I think there is a GoFundMe. Canada's building a shrub. (laughs) <laughs> I think they are I think, I think Canada To keep us out I think though. Canada is raising a shrub Across the northern border there <laughs> To keep us out mm-hmm. And you have to understand Both sides on, on the sides are, are separated by water So the only place really That people could come in Who want to be here Are from Mexico So it looks like It's all oh, the brown people But it's not, it's not Whose fault is it That brown people Are to the south of us it's not our fault. It isn't our fault that brown it's, people are to the south of us. It's science. It's where the equator is. But is it our fault? No, it's not our fault. So I don't. I don't understand. I mean, I do. I do want some sovereignty. I want. I would like for us to define what being a United States, a person who is from the United States, is. What does being American? Right, mean and it you. might not be that. It might not be Uncle Jeb. It might not be that. It's, right, it's not make America great again. It, okay, I think America had was greater than it is right now. When my childhood, it definitely was. People had retirements. You didn't know shit. You were a child. But I knew that my my granddad was going to retire and have some money. You didn't know. You, I all didn't you know. knew was granddad put you on the lap and gave you a lollipop. You didn't know no, no, the no. fuck was going on. A in little the world. older than that. I'm talking in the '90s. I oh. did know. I definitely knew in the 90s. You were woke in the 90s? I wasn't yeah. woke, but I could pay attention enough to understand what was going on around me. And I knew that my mom was putting into a retirement that she could actually pull from one day. I knew that it, my That's mom started five businesses fortunate. when I was young. In, in her life, she's had five different businesses. So I've seen people want to do something and be able to actually do it. Whereas I don't think that that's the, the same now. Where Whereas now... We have places where you go in just because, I'll put it like this. Some people, I'm not going to put a race on it. I'm not going to put nationality. Some people are not getting business loans when they want to put out, take out a loan on something. Uh, you know what I mean? Let's just, I'll leave it at that. What, 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 what say you? <laughs> I'm not, I don't even want to go any further on that. Mm-hmm. But you know what? If, <laughs> if I have to say anything, I, I think America is the place where you can, where, and I think that's been part of the marketing too That even if those odds are against you Right? Where you can't get the loan Or you can't do this Or you can't do that Whatever Right? You can still make it You can still find a way If you work hard Can you do that in Mexico? Can, Mex- can you do that in Mexico? Why not? I've never lived there So I can't oh, Yeah, say. I can't I don't believe you can I believe that you, you, in the United States Is unique in that And and but, that's why there's so much immigration. But you know what? I'll say this as well. There is, it like people come to Atlanta in specific because there is that possibility. Yeah. 
Because in like where I'm from in Dayton, Ohio, if you wanted to become a, uh, a, a entertainer, you want to become an actor or an actress or a model, you can try, but the resources aren't there. Mm. the 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 network isn't there. there. The relay. It's like trying to. It's like the only thing that Atlanta doesn't have is an ocean. Right. Okay. Don't so, have water. So you don't want to protect that. You don't want to protect the mean? ability for you to travel within your country lines to Atlanta, a place like Atlanta. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying is that it, it's not like America gets seen as the place where all this stuff is possible. But you can't do that shit in Tulsa. I understand, but you can. But you can come to Atlanta without any papers. Right. It's America, but it's but it's really Los Angeles. Okay. It's fine. New York. Okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. But what I'm asking you is, do you not want to protect that? Do you feel like that should be anyone who was in the the globe? They have the they have the, they should have the ability to do that, or you say you know what this is ours we've built this this is kind of special let's take care of it so that it isn't so watered down because if everybody came to Atlanta and everybody was able to do it then less more people would be trying to do the same thing that you're doing therefore it would water it down and wash away your aspirations true or false mm, I don't know that I would water it down like you trying to be successful doesn't mean that I can't be but after but after a while I think it does matter if everybody was was trying to be a, a shopper. You know what I'm saying? If that, like you said, that's a unique feel. You found a niche. That's something that that you're you were good at. You you said I, I I enjoy doing this. Why not make a business out of something that I enjoy doing? And now you made a bit. What if everybody was trying to like nobody wanted to rap no more. Nobody tried to give you a mixtape at Kroger, and now they all wanted to do that. At some point, there's a there's a line where it becomes so saturated. That's what happened to rap here. That's what happened to being a producer in Atlanta. At first, it was really cool because there were only a handful of people doing it, and so they they made a name for themselves. But now. Everybody's a rapper. Everybody got a mixtape. Everybody's a producer. Everybody's an Uber driver. Everybody's an Uber driver. And what is and what is the result of that? Less money for the ones who are doing it. Even the ones who are successful. So you may be successful. You may successfully get your name on a mixtape and get one song, right? But if it's not a hit, you might not get another song. Why? Because there's another guy who's decent. And I, I, you know, he's he's free. You got a little mixtape song now, so you think you're doing something. I don't need you. I'm gonna get this free guy because he's trying to come up. There, there is a problem with everybody coming and trying to do something. So it has to be protected. Otherwise, we run the risk of nobody really, you know, literally nobody getting the chance. Well, if that's the case, then America's already watered down. It's too late. No, that's what somebody has to make us. Somebody has to say something. Somebody has to. Somebody has to care about the sovereignty. You don't agree with that at all, Shanice? Um, I, I mean. I agree with your standpoint as far as, you know, protecting, you know, the the ratios and things like that here as far as opportunity go, because we know America is a place full of opportunity. However, what I think that people are having a hard time, you know, determining is how this wall is supposed to keep, you know, these people out when they dig tunnels, when they, you know, they have like secret caves and all that kind of stuff, you know, to go that they can go through to get here. So, I mean... I'm not, I don't understand the dynamics of a wall. I don't understand why you would choose a wall. Like it's, it's, I think it's more than just building a wall to keep people out. I think people want to know how is this wall supposed to, you know, keep people out of this country. And, and at the same time, it's, I mean, the Mexicans are probably one of the few populations of people that are coming over here and they're only being targeted because they may not always have the money to have their papers right. But you got to understand, there are a lot of people coming, there are a lot of people who live in other countries who who come here, see, see room for opportunity, make the proper investment, and they can conquer, you know, an industry or operate an industry really well and not even have to live here. So it is it that you're keeping just those people out? And that's what you said, like, is it... Is it Trump or is it Trump not liking Mexicans? Because people can come from other countries as long as their papers are right and do everything that a lot of us Americans are afforded to do. You know what I mean? So is it just that, okay, where we want to ban um, Hispanic people from coming over here? Or is it that we want to ban all people from coming, you know, coming here? Or not necessarily Mexican, but poorer people. Yeah, poorer people. I think there's value in that too. Mmm. I think there's value in that. Okay, so you're saying that somebody who comes from another country who does their paperwork right mm-hmm. can afford to be here without having to be here. 
basically. I mean, they can afford to come here, whatever they have to do, without having to actually move here. Because see, here's the thing: you can you you have to whether you're from here or from somewhere else, and you come here, you have to carve out your own niche. Right. And that's where I think a a lot of uh, different nationalities that are successful here, they've been able to dominate a particular industry. Right. Um, Whereas like you might hear about someone from from Africa or, or an Indian that comes over here and they become a doctor. Right, a lot of Nigerian doctors, yeah, yeah, a lot of Indian sure, doctors, sure. and things like that. But when we think about people who own nail salons, we're thinking about the Koreans, yeah, all day long. You know what I mean? So or it's, Vietnamese, or, or, right? Yeah, just Asian in general, right? Yeah. As, as well. So it's not that everyone, um, everyone wants to become a rapper or or a, a celebrity host, right? But you can come over here and you can. Create your niche And you do that Mm -hmm. And if you bring more people That With you that do that Then y'all become powerful You become a dynasty You become strong Right But isn't What she Shanice just got through saying That people get their paperwork done They do it They they follow the the procedure And they come and do whatever All the wall does Is say Here's a foundation For whatever we're about to do Future wise Of you having to do it The right way Nobody's mad at a Mexican person who comes over and puts their paperwork in. It's just the ones that just want to walk through. And yes, there are other ways, digging tunnels or whatever, but you don't, people can break into your house. You're still going to put a lock on your door. And I know that's very simplified. I know it's ridiculously simplified, but you're going to put a lock on your door whether or not somebody could break in the window. You're going to do that because it just makes it, that's more difficult. They're, they could just walk in your front door if you don't have a lock on your door, but mm-hmm. now they got to come through the window. They got to maybe set the alarm off, something. There, there's something that we're saying, hey, don't come and in And see, here. that's just it. Uh, especially being a black person in America, you know that there are multiple walls. That physical wall ain't going to be it. Like, it's, it's, it's redlining. Right there, there are barriers to education. Right, there are barriers to uh, 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 different opportunities financially. We talked about business loans, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So there's all sorts of walls. Like it, this physical wall being erected don't stop nothing. Oh, maybe, but you know, sometimes people can't see the forest from the trees. They don't know the fiftieth step. They only know the first step. And if they're, if you're, if I, if I were to tell you that I know for sure the fiftieth step would fix those things, but first we have to do the first step, which is getting a real wall to start making up some sovereignty, so we can know who we're taking care of and who we're not taking care of anymore. If I were to tell you that, you'd be like, nah, that's bullshit. But what I'm saying is you may not see the whole landscape. And here we are throwing our opinions around, but maybe we don't even know what the landscape actually is. And yes, we know that there are multiple barriers or multiple walls, right? But how do you fix that? You can't start at the 50th wall. You can't start at redlining. There's not a way to start at redlining. How come there, 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 there just isn't? Because what are you, what are you saying? You're saying that if in order for red line, I to, think police brutality is a wall. Okay, but you can't start at police brutality. You just can't. There's Why there not? Are, because there are Why other not? things you, at play. You, hey, if you got, if that's where you are, then that's where you have to start. But that's start. not where we are. That's a small section of where we are. There's so much other. Have you ever been pre- police brutalized? You have a business, right? You're doing well for yourself. Everybody's story is not getting beat up by the police. We can't keep saying our story is police brutality. That's not our story. We have so many other stories. We can't start there. I don't. I don't um, disagree that we do have other. You know, we don't have other stories. However, I feel like you know there are several issues that people are going to have to attack from all different angles. You know what I mean? If if there if it show if statistics show that you know one population faces you know a lower number of br- police brutality in incidents or, you know, the ratio of murders by police is, is, um, much lower by one from one race to another race. That's, that's an evident issue. And even though you may not have personally been brutalized, that doesn't mean that I can't stand in the gap for people who have lost family members who have been brutalized or murdered. You know, I feel like there are a lot of issues that we have to, um, take a stand on and, and try to conquer, you know, and overcome, um, just as black people in general, you know, wealth gap, police brutality, you know what I'm saying? Racism, mur- you know, murder, all, you know, things like that. I mean, there, right. there are a lot of things. I don't feel like there is one particular place to start. The, 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 to me, the ultimate place to start is to make a conscious decision to, you know, affect change. And a lot of us haven't done that. We right. just kind of sit on the sidelines. If you had a room full of 100 people, right, mm-hmm. you were in charge and something was affecting 12 of those people. 
and then there was something that was affecting all 100 of those people. Are you going to attack the thing that's attacking, that's, that's hurting 12 of those people first or the 100? No, oh, the 100 for sure. Right. Uh, black people make up 12, 13%. They're not going to address that issue first. It's just not going. That's not a realistic. That's well, not a realistic we're idea. To address the issue. That's not a realistic a- idea. That's just not realistic. If there's an issue that's that's more, I guess, for the hundred percent, and of course that doesn't even address everybody for hundred. But I'm just trying to make it simple. That's going to be addressed first. It just is. I mean, and and you and you're gonna in your own words, you would address the hundred first. It's just. Yeah. I, so basically, what you're saying is that you know America will address the issue that's affecting all of its people. I first, sure hope which so. Which is by building this wall to prevent illegal um, immigrants from Mexico. First of all, I sure hope we so. We need to understand that um, all illegal immigrants are not Mexican. You no, know? no, no. They're and, just crossing through from Mexico. And yeah, but I feel. Right. I, I mean, granted, I don't know the numbers, and I feel like you know this is not presented in numbers like we need it to be. Right. Like if you say, okay, boom, you know one. Um, percentage of illegal immigrants. Okay, 98% Mexican, 1% West Indian, 1% African, or whatever, you know, whatever right. the case may be. Then we can say, okay, boom, yeah, this is this is kind of a problem. You know what right. I mean? Maybe we do need to do something. But I, I've never seen it broken down in numbers where it specifically says that, you know, Mexicans are the leading number of illegal immigrants in America. I, I mean, I'm, I know a lot of, you know, illegal people from other several other races and I can't even tell you how many Mexican ones that I personally know. How did know. they get here though? I I mean, they've come here on their green cards. Right, you know, and stayed. And stayed. Right. You know what I mean? So as much effort as we're putting into that, if we want to make, you know, this um a total change, you gotta have put in some regulations are, for other you know, Are you other willing right well. now to let's call those people and, and Report them. I mean, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Come on, you, I don't know. Yo. I mean, I can't say that I know anybody <laughs> personally. See. You know what I mean? I know of people, you know, who are here, right? Um, from uh, several other races. Right. I don't know them personally to pick up a phone and call them. They're not friends oh, with okay. me or anything. Okay. But we can maybe just give out about a... it all the time. Somebody's cousin's friend, or you know, whatever. Or... But you know what? When when someone of especially it, it seems to only happen to people of color, but when someone is stopped. Especially recently, and they're saying, hey, do you live here? Why are you in this apartment building? Why are you shopping here? They are not protecting America's sovereignty. Okay, so you're talking about two or three examples. Come, This is what I'm saying, man. We're blowing three <laughs> examples up as I, if this is the everyday. I have never been stopped and asked, am I supposed to be there? I don't know if you have. Maybe you have. I have never. Have and, you ever been stopped and, and someone assumed that you speak Spanish? Yes. So it could happen to you. It could. It could. It could. Mm-hmm. But that's. But what I'm saying is though. But you were born here. You know how many times people have not thought I spoke Spanish though. Like, come on, we cannot only just all we're gonna just pay attention to is the negative stuff. There are so many other stories so, that need but, to be no, told. No, but why am I ignoring it? I'm not saying if you don't want me it. to pay attention to the to the negative stuff. Fine. That cop, but do you got, want me that to, cop to got ignore? convicted. It's not ignored. Do you want me to ignore the way she these got people convicted. are being treated? She got convicted. This is a this is a non problem. Of course, that guy's dead. His life is gone. There's a problem there. But the fact that she got convicted, that Ooh. is proof. The woman got convicted. The one that busting up. Yes, the she got convicted. That's one. Well, damn well, it, we're I talking about that. one. Was she even in police <laughs> uniform? Like she wasn't. I don't think was she. Yeah. So no, it's it's. I mean, it's not so. It. I feel like it more so just happens to be that she was a police rather than her using her you know badge to enter break and enter into somebody you know. Um, somebody's apartment is is totally to me. That's just different. That's like a lover's quarrel, a lover's issue, and you know, and a crime of passion. You know. Um, however, like if you do look at the number of incidents where police are totally in uniform, and there may be more than one of them, you know, compared to the number of African American people they may be, they may be arresting or you know, um, you know, holding at the moment. I mean, I can't say that I knowledgeably know that there are, you know, at least 50-50, you know, um, a, fit, a half number, an equal number of people who have been convicted versus people who have not. So for that, for it, in my mind, for it to be that majority of them have not been convicted, to me, that's an issue. Well, the majority of cops don't get convicted in any of those incidents, whether they're against black people or white or people. Or white people. It's, but that's a problem that's the systemic, and it's not necessarily all the way racial. It's just there's something wrong with the way that our, so, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. authority yeah. figures are treated when it comes to uh-huh. court cases. You know what I'm saying? The way that they're punished is a little different 
as if they're better than or above the same guidelines that we have and we break laws. Why are we afraid of it being racial when the data is clearly lopsided? The data is, it is of, on white people. More white people get killed by police than black people. There are more white people living in America than white people. That's true, people. but there are more white people that get harassed and killed by the police than black people. So you can flip the stats any way you want. The stats can be flipped to be however you oh, want. They now, can. Now the numbers, now they I can be flipped to, any I way. The numbers because, flex. I mean, of of course, if there are like, let's just say there are three million white people and you know five hundred thousand and black people in a in an, an area, and you know it says okay, boom, one million white people have gotten killed, but four hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine black people have gotten killed. Like you can't say that, you know, oh, just because it's one million compared to you know one shy of five hundred thousand that more white people have gotten killed. You have to look at the percentage. Well, no, that's actually completely accurate. One million versus four hundred ninety nine thousand is, is that's different. Those are different numbers. You're yeah. saying as far as percentage wise. Yeah, as far as percentage. As if far it, as percentage wise, yes. If it shows um, more widely by a population, you know. But that that determines whether or not you're saying population, or you're saying percentage wise, or you're saying numbers. So, like I say, you can flip the stats to 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 fix you, to I guess work on your argument. Okay. If we're going to talk about numbers, you have to be able to accept both sides of it. And if you do, then it kind of rules out the other one. All I'm saying is that is there a problem? Absolutely, there's a problem. But I don't know that I'm smart enough to know how to fix that problem based off of just turning the switch on saying where the police brutality is accepted anymore. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be accepted against any race. Mm -hmm. But who, where's the switch? Show me where the switch is to turn that off, Kevin. Alf, we can, we'll go the protest right now to turn, now that to turn off, it off. To, to put more people who are to put more people who are uh, kind of like what Trump did, actually, because Trump is taking the the people who are uh, against that particular industry, he's putting them in charge of it. So if you took if you took all the felons and put them in charge of the justice system right. and put them in charge of making sure that the they're the ones that are reviewing these cases right. when uh, police are or when police are firing their weapons and and innocent people are getting killed. Yeah, if prisoners were in charge of that, right. oh. Things I mean, might change. Lots might of black, look a little different. Lots of black people got brutalized under Obama too. He and he rescued a few of them. He got a few of them out of jail at the end there. But lots of black people got brutalized. What, what, what does under Obama have to do it? Because what does under Trump have to do? Racism with it? has lasted this, this shit, longer than exact, Obama's eight years. And Trump. It's not new. It's, it's not new. It's like Trump. It's no, all but Obama wasn't a spear. He was Obama wasn't a lightning rod for racism. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. A lot of black people would. Hoteps mm. even. I think a lot of hoteps aren't on your side on that one. Not the same way Trump is. I don't no, think no, we're going to no, be able no. to come to a, an agreement or a dis. Yeah, Are we ever? This. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> you know what? No, before we do, we have to thank our guests. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, it's been a pleasure. I had a great time. This has been fun. It's my first time doing a podcast, so thank you. We popped your cherry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we pop you this podcast, Cherry. Lord. So now don't be a podcast hold on. You get what I'm saying? Because that means you're on everybody's show. See your ass everywhere. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'd love to come and do this again with you guys. I mean, nobody else has invited me, so I'm not just going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here and go there. But Well, you're welcome to come back if you like. Ever see wanna... in front of everybody, camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in to Music Love Life, and we'll check y'all next time. Music Love Life.